In this video, I'll show you the controls you should pay attention to when configuring the camera for near objects. Digital gain, laser power, min distance, and receiver gain. I already have the L515 streaming both depth and color. I'm using the RealSense Viewer for this video, which is our open source software for controlling RealSense cameras and viewing their output. You can get a copy of the RealSense Viewer at intelrealsense.com and GitHub. So first, let's take a look at where these controls are located. The digital gain is a drop-down menu that toggles between high and low gain. Laser power is a slider where 100 is max power and zero is minimum power. Min distance is in millimeters and is an artificial threshold of the camera's minimum depth. And receiver gain is a slider where the smaller number equals a higher gain. The preset choice affects the settings we just reviewed. It is important to realize that any manual adjustments to the controls will result in the preset showing custom. This is an indication that something was modified from the original preset. The presets are definitely the best place to start and should be used for probably 95% of customer applications. Let's start by looking at max range. For the max range preset, the digital gain is set to high, laser power is 100, min distance is set to 490 millimeter, and receiver gain is set to nine. These are the settings that we tested and found to provide the best results if the goal is to get the maximum range out of the camera with no ambient sunlight to very little ambient sunlight in the scene. The min distance is an artificial threshold of the camera's depth. As my hand crosses 490 millimeters, the depth map transitions from dark blue, which represents near pixels, to black, which represents no depth value. Although the camera is capable of providing depth distances less than 49 centimeters, our min distance setting means that the camera will give a depth value of zero or null to any pixels closer to the camera than the min distance of 49 centimeters. I should mention at this point that you might see the colors in the depth map that jump a little bit depending on what is in the field of view. This is because I have the depth visualization set to dynamic, which means the software is automatically adjusting the depth color to show blue at the closest pixels and red at the furthest pixels. The scale of the colors is seen on the right side of the depth window. As objects get closer to and further away from the camera, the software might need to adjust these colors. This has nothing to do with the depth value of the pixel, only the color representation of the pixel in the viewer. So back to min distance. Why would we even put an artificial limit on the depth for near objects? So let's pull the min distance down to zero and see what happens. You can now see that my hand remains visible past the 49 centimeter depth mark. Also notice that noise is developing on the edges of my fingers, and when the hand is close enough to L515, noise or false depth values appear in the background. Now I'll switch back to the max range preset, which resets the min range to 490 millimeters. With this setting again, we stop reporting depth early to prevent noise and false depth. In general, software is better off with no depth information than with wrong depth information. And we are assuming that if you set the camera at max range, you aren't as concerned about near range. With min distance up to 49 centimeters, even as my hand gets very close to the camera, there is no false depth in the background. We do see some holes or null depth values start to show up in the background, but nothing nearly as bad as when the min range threshold is removed. Now let's look at the short range preset. The digital gain has been changed from high gain to low gain. Laser power has been reduced from 100 to 84. Min distance is reduced from 490 millimeters to 190 millimeters. And receiver gain went from nine to 18. The reduced min distance value allows the camera to report depth information even at relatively close distances. But what if we want the camera to see objects that are extremely close? Here, I've reduced the laser power down to zero, which is the lowest setting. 
I set min distance to zero. Receiver gain is set to 18, which is the lowest gain setting. And digital gain is set to low gain. As I bring the object close to the camera, you'll notice the background gets extremely noisy. This is because the scene has exceeded the dynamic range of the L515. A scene where one object is very close to the camera and the other objects of the background is relatively far from the camera can be a challenge for L515. This is true for any time of flight depth solution. You can still see great detail in the close object, but the rest of the information in the scene is not useful. If your use case requires the close view of an object, we recommend limiting the depth of the entire scene. For example, if the object were on a table instead of being held, the table would be the scene background. For this example, I hold a piece of paper up in front of the L515 and then hold the object in front of the paper. Now that the max range of the scene is reduced, all the noise we saw previously is eliminated. The nearest supported distance to the L515 is 20 centimeters. It's possible to use L515 down to 5 centimeters and get good results, but RealSense cannot guarantee accuracy at this distance. I'd encourage you to test your specific setup to know if the depth quality at very close distance is adequate for your needs. Here, you'll notice when I get the object extremely close to the camera, the depth window goes completely black. If an object gets too close to the camera, the laser is automatically disabled to prevent any damage to the receiver. When the object is moved further away from the camera, the laser is automatically enabled again. Something else to notice here is that with the laser power and gain turned down to minimum values, we see more holes or null depth values. I'll turn up the laser power and you can see the holes disappear since now more of the light is able to reflect off the walls and return to the camera. So in summary, the presets are a great starting point and will likely be the settings to use for 95% of applications. In the case where you need to fine tune the L515 settings, you have control over the laser power, digital gain, and receiver gain and you are able to override the minimum distance.